Now that you know a bit more about the reactive programming principles, let's talk about the Java Reactive Streams API. We'll focus on the key abstractions that are part of this API, including publishers, subscribers, and subscriptions. The Reactive Streams API was first introduced into Java with Java 9. If you recall the history of Java, Java 8 is where the concept of functional programming was first added, and in particular support for Java streams and Java parallel streams were added, as well as support for Java completable futures. Java 9 goes a bit further and adds support for something called reactive streams via the flow class. This particular class and the interfaces it defines add support for a so-called stream-oriented pub-sub pattern model. This particular model combines two patterns from the game, famous Gang of Four book. The first pattern is the iterator pattern, which applies a pull model, where app subscribers will pull items from a publisher's source. And the other model is the observer pattern, which applies a push model that reacts when a publisher's source pushes an item to a subscriber sync. And those are the two basic ways that you can communicate using Java Flow API and Java Reactive Streams. Now, as we'll see later when we talk about the different Reactive Streams frameworks like RxJava and Project Reactor, they add a lot more things to what we're about to talk about. But they're all based on the core interfaces we're going to discuss here. There are four core interfaces that are part of the Java Flow API. And these are designed to ensure interoperability between different Reactive Streams implementations. As you can see here, not surprisingly, we have a publisher interface with a method called subscribe. We have a subscriber interface with several methods like on subscribe, on next, on error, and on complete. We have something called a subscription, which is related to the subscriber. And then finally, we have something else called a processor, which is both a publisher and a subscriber. And we'll see later that many of the operators that are provided in Reactive Streams frameworks are essentially processors. They take data from one publisher, do something to it, and then push it on to some subscriber down the stream. Let's talk about some of the key abstractions in the Java Flow API. A flow involves interactions between three key abstractions or three key components. And these, again, are publishers, subscribers, and subscriptions. Publishers are sources that can produce zero or more events that can then be pushed to zero or more subscribers. Subscribers are sinks or receivers that register for and consume events that are published by the publishers. The publishers push events to subscribers by various so-called hook methods. A hook method is just a, a virtual method call that can be overridden and provide some behavior that can be customized in a runtime context in an object-oriented environment. And these three methods, as we'll see, are on next, on error, and on complete. And then finally, there's another abstraction called a subscription. And this subscription is used to control the flow of events between the subscribers and the publishers. And the basic idea here is you uh, want the subscriber to be able to indicate to the publisher how many events it can consume to prevent fast publishers from overwhelming the processing resources of slower subscribers. So let's take a look at basically how these different mechanisms and these different abstractions interact. So the way things typically start out is a subscriber object or subscriber component will come along and subscribe to a publisher. And that basically requests the publisher to start pushing a stream of data events to it. One of the things to remember about reactive streams is that they're inherently lazy. And what that means is that they don't actually start to do anything until subscribe or some variant of subscribe is actually called. So nothing happens until subscribe is, is invoked or some variant of subscribe. Then once the publisher is about to begin sending information, it calls back the on subscribe method to the subscriber. And that enables the subscriber to request how many events should be sent. And you can request various numbers. You can say, I only want, say, n events, where n is small, like 3 or 5 or 10. You could also say, I want to have an unlimited number of events sent, in which case then the publisher will just start pumping them away as quickly as it can. Note again, however, that no events are actually sent by a publisher until the subscriber indicates demand by calling this request method. Once the publisher and subscriber are connected somehow by these, this protocol we just talked about, 
then the events can start to flow. The most common type of event of which there can be zero or more events is the on next event. And this is essentially a data notification hook method that's called by the publisher in response to the request that the subscriber gave. So it basically is a way for the publisher to inform the subscriber, hey, something is here and uh, you, should do, you should do something with it, whatever you're going to be doing with it, go ahead and do something with it. When you've sent all of the events, then the publisher will invoke the on complete method if everything is completed successfully. I'm an old Unix programmer from way back in the day. So I kind of think about on complete as sort of like the old Unix end of file marker that says, I've finished transmitting my stream of data to you. And now you can clean up or do whatever you need to do after the stream of data has been sent. And then there's also another hook method that could be sent, which is on error. And this is something that's called by a publisher to indicate when an error has occurred. Now, what's interesting to note about this is there can be zero or more on next event invocations. If everything goes well, there'll be one on completion event notification. And if there's something that goes wrong, then there'll be one on error notification. And those are mutually exclusive. You don't have both on complete and on error. You have one or the other. So that's the end of a quick overview of the Java Reactive Streams API. At this point, you probably are wondering, what the heck good is this? How could I write real programs with that? And that's a very good question. And we'll begin to answer that question in more detail starting in the next part of the lesson.